child is born, unto us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And to us the child is born, unto us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Sit on David's throne, upholding righteousness, our God shall accomplish this, and he will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, and He will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor. sing a children's carol by an angel Till morning is 
Ben's going to come and do a reading for us. Ben's not in the house yet. Peter, would you do a reading for us? Would you, would you do a reading? Luke 1. Luke 1, 26. 26. Okay. okay, Luke 1 from verse, just verse 26. To 38. To 28. 38, okay, long one. May I ask you, Peter? <laughs> anyway, it's lovely to, to be able to share this time of year, isn't it lovely, with the Christmas trees and the lights and being together as the family of God. In the six months of, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, at Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth will become pregnant in her old age. People used to say that she was barren, but she will conceive a son and is now in her sixth month for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Thank you, Peter. Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. And fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace upon the for Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep and watch of wandering love. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given 
So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear he's coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Abuchi. Good morning to all of you. I will be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And his taxing was from, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his exposed wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her first son, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Praise God. Birds watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread had seized their troubled minds. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is born of David's line, a Savior who is Christ. 
Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly baby there shall find to human view displayed, all merely wrapped in swathing bounds and in a major Spake the seraph and forthwith out near a shining throng of angels praising God who thus addressed their joyful song. All glory be to God on high and to the earth below. Matthew 2, 1 to 11. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born again, King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until they stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So good to see you all this morning and thank you for being here today at our carol service. We have two functions this morning. One is to sing praises to the Lord and to particularly remember his coming at Christmas time. But also we're going to this morning honor Peter and Sandy, Peter and Sandy Burroughs, who have been faithfully ministering to us over the past 13 years. Um, if you're on Zoom uh, this morning, we want to welcome you. And uh, if you're here in the service, wonderful to see you. May God richly bless us as we praise God together. When we sit, we're not used to singing the hymns, are we? And, and carols are basically hymns about Christmas time, yeah? It takes us a little while to get into them, particularly that the older songs, haven't they got, they're full of words, aren't they? And by the way, for a musician, they're full of chords. <laughs> but they're full of words and great words. Words that have stood the test of time. I've often thought about, you know, our, the choruses that we sing, the songs that we sing in church. The ones that will, we, we will, that will stand the test of time will be the ones that people are still singing in 20, 30, 40, or 50 years' time. And these are these kind of songs, aren't they? Well, as I said, we're honoring Peter and Sandy this morning. And you know, friends, we had really wished that we, this could have been done 
with a lunch or a party of some description, but this continuing restrictions has meant we haven't been able to do that. Um, but we didn't want to let this year end without us saying a very big thank you to them for their 13 years of ministry and faithful service among us. We thank God for the years of blessing and of growth and of fruitfulness in their ministry. We also give thanks to God for bringing us through so many not so easy seasons, perhaps like the one that we're experiencing right now. But through every season, Peter and Sandy have been a model to us in our church family of humility and of service and of faithfulness and of brotherly and of sisterly love. Many folks have been greatly impacted by Peter and Sandy's ministry here. And just, I thought I'd ask someone, Bila is going to come and he's going to share with us just what Peter's ministry has meant to him. This one is good for me. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you. And uh, uh, a few people around here and Peter, Sandy. Thank you very much for the opportunity from Stephen just to, uh, to share what really Peter and of course Sandy mean to me in the last three and a half years. I remember the first time when I came to this church when, touched, when God touched my heart and I was just standing over there and I was full of fear. I, I, I didn't know what's going to happen. I, don't, I didn't know what to say or, or who to talk to and I just after the first service, I ran off technically, <laughs> and uh, and the second one, Ray, came to me, turned towards me, and uh, he he seen my my tears in my eyes, I think, and he just told me, okay, we have a pastor, Pastor Peter, and you can talk to him, and uh, it happened in in June in 2018, the first time when we met in the office here with Peter and. Uh, and I felt straight away, and I knew that I can be really honest, honest to him. And uh, I taught him my my past. I taught him my my present, and I I I wasn't able to tell him my future because <laughs> that was the that was the time just to figure out what's gonna happen. But I'm really grateful to the Lord for him. And I was just thinking so many times, how is it possible to be? Uh, a Hungarian guy here in Ireland to meet uh, a pastor from South Africa in Ireland in the GCF. So, and it's God's hand anyway. So I was, I'm, I'm really grateful for, for, for Pastor Peter because um, I didn't know, I don't know what he's seen in me. Uh, he's seen my struggles, my my problems, and even my stupid thoughts as well. But he never gave up on me, and even we still going on these meetings even on through the WhatsApp or, 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 or he comes to my, to our house as well. And, uh, we can, we can discuss everything, the seriously, everything. So, and, uh, and I'm so grateful for the Lord, because if I just look at myself, sometimes I'm, I just feel like I, if I was Peter, I would not spend a minute on myself. So, <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much, and thank you for the Lord, and I'm, I'm really appreciate that. I really appreciate every minute, <clears throat> and every phone call, and every prayer, and everything what we, what we shared, and what we what we had in the past, and and I hope it will be in the future as well. So we just keep it up. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Bila. Peter certainly has been a wonderful pastor. He's given me a lot to live up to. In 1995, shortly after I came to Galway with children's ministry, one of the longtime members of this church, Dermot Kelly, said in a meeting that Stephen and Karen's coming to Galway was a gift to the church and to the city and its people. I was greatly touched and blessed by that. What I think he meant was that any Christian who came teaching people about Christ was a gift to the church and a gift to the city. 
That has stayed with me over the years. And I've repeated it to many other people who have come to Galway to serve Christ. I believe it's very true of Peter and Sandy. They have been a gift to the church and to the believers here and whether the city recognizes it or not to the people of the city. At Christmas, we remember the gift that God sent into the world, the gift of his precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came as a gift to humanity. We like Christmas because it speaks about God's gifts and God's greatest gift, Jesus himself. He came to save, he came to heal, he came to transform lives, and he came to bless. Jesus said to us, I have come that you might have life, that you might have life. And we want everything we do as God's people to be full of life, full of life. When you receive some gifts, you can't really imagine the impact that they're going to have on your life. My work, other work in teaching music to children has made me so aware of the impact that a musical gift can bring to a child's life and even to their future. When the father sent the son, this world didn't realize that when it looked on that tiny infant, that the impact that he was going to have rippling down through centuries, but now millennia, Jesus came to save. He was the most unique gift that God has ever given. Peter and Sandy, when you came here, we didn't know what impact that you were going to have among us. But we are very grateful for the things that you have been able to achieve in your ministry here. The wonderful ministry that you were going to have was yet unseen. And the so many lives, as we've heard, just a small bit of what of the lives that you are going to influence and impact. Thank you for the ways in which you have pastored and discipled people in this church. Many young people, many people who have come to this country just like you did, people who have been here a long time, young and old alike. You know, many people in this church have only known your ministry to them as you have pastored. People have got saved. People have been healed and restored through your ministry. Since the time of Jesus, Christians have been going out from other places with the gospel message. They have been crossing borders, countries, and even oceans to bring the gospel to other people. Peter and Sandy are those type of people. God sent them from a land far, far away to Ireland to minister among us. And we are grateful that they were obedient to God's call. Like Abraham, in one sense, they went out not knowing where they were going to end up. But they came in faith and trust and belief in the Lord. And they landed here. And we're so grateful for their ministry. We're grateful that they were obedient to this call of God. And we as a church are also thankful for the 13 years of faithful service among us. They have sown into the lives of people in this church. Peter, as a pastor, has been a support to so many of us through the vicissitudes of life. You like that word? It's the ups and downs. The ups and downs. And certainly life creates those, doesn't it? Sandy worked for years in the church as a secretary, keeping the wheels of everyday ministry turning and being a support to so many of the ladies as well as to Peter himself. There are many things that we could say about their character, about their love and their steadfastness. I know you may have your own personal stories of how this couple has blessed you by their ministry here, especially those of us who've had to walk difficult paths and found them to be an arm to lean on and even a shoulder to cry on. On the 21st of September 2008, Peter was commissioned as pastor of this church. I actually spoke that Sunday and I remember speaking on the relationship between Jonathan and David. It was about brotherly love. 
the kind of love that the Bible shows us between God and his people, and the love that Christians are to share and, and show among each other. I said that a brother is loving and committed, that a brother is faithful and loyal, that a brother is accountable, that a brother is honest and open, that a brother is Christ-centered. I thank personally, I rather, I thank Peter personally, that he has been a David to my Jonathan on so many occasions, and I know that he has been that to so many of you also. At Christmas, we remember the love that God had for us in sending the Lord Jesus to be our Savior. God shows himself to be our greatest friend. And I thank God that we have had wonderful friends in Peter and Sandy. They have been a brother and a sister. They have been a father and a mother. They have been a friend. They have been a confidant, a shepherd, a fellow laborer in Christ's vineyard. We want them to be blessed as they explore their next opportunities for service. Because the Lord has no retirement, essentially. Because he's always got something else for us to do. Peter has actually let the elders know that, he's, that next year he's going to be involved in helping a church to be planted in June. And we pray that the Lord blesses him and Sandy in that new challenge. Peter and Sandy, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for all the blessings that you have given us over the years. We have really appreciated God's call on your lives. And I've asked Rueda if she would come with a few gifts, just a couple of gifts. And I'm not sure, Mado, if you want to give, there's a gift down behind as well. If you would like to give, and maybe Peter and Sandy, would you mind standing up? So that the people on Zoom can see as well. Yeah. So, Rueda, would you mind just... And Esther, you're going to come and just give a bunch of flowers to them. Let's give them a round of applause. I think this is one occasion where we can hug, okay? <laughs> just, in case, just in case there's any spies on Zoom. <laughs> Would you like to say anything, Peter? Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, well, that, who knows how fast time flies? It just, it just does. And as we look back um, through all the days, the good, the not so good, and some bad ones, God's grace has been amazing. If there has been a central point in our ministry, not only maybe through us, but from God to us, it's been his amazing grace. This church is here. Stephen is serving here. Your elders are serving here by God's amazing grace. You are part of this church, shining the light of Christ here by God's amazing grace. We're saved by grace. We're sustained by grace. We're transformed by grace. And one day we're going to be perfected by God's grace. Continue to share the message of God's wonderful grace. So it's been a season in our lives that has flown by. It's been a season where we've gone through personal ups and downs as well as seeing the church going through personal 
ups and downs. But God. So I want to leave you with, we've got a gift for you as well as a church. But my favorite Bible verse to you today, Ephesians chapter 2, 21 and 22. And you should know this almost off by heart. He is able, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we can ask or even imagine. Sometimes he comes with wonderful surprises that just blow us out of the water. Sometimes he comes with those other surprises that just seem to blow us up. But his grace sustains us through all that. So it's been a, a, a pleasure to be walking with you through this journey. It's a pilgrimage that we're all on. And the pilgrimage is going to continue, and God's going to continue working through this church, working through us as individuals to achieve his plans and his purposes. And I'm just very blessed to have had Stephen and the elders as well supporting me, and Sandy here is my, my wife. Thank you. Thank you all. I just want to ask Sandy, did you want to say anything? God is good, isn't he? And I want to thank you for your love and for your kindnesses and for your support and your care for us as well. Um, you hold a very special place in all our hearts, in our hearts. And um, I want to thank God that he's given you Stephen. He's a godly man. He's very gifted. He's willing to step up to the mark and stand in the gap when, there, when nobody else is, is available. And I pray that you will support him and love him and care for him as much as you did for us. Thank you so much. Just, just before you sit down, I've asked the elders if they wouldn't mind coming up and, um, and just praying with you. Maybe two on that side and two on this side for the, you know, the optic. Me too, and you want yeah. <laughs> And just looking at colors here, if you want to know the senior person here, you'd have to look to Sean. He's in Cardinal Red. <laughs> Whereas Joe and I are in Bishop Pink, or Bishop Purple, sorry. Purple. So let's just pray for them. Maybe we. I'm going to pray what the psalmist prayed. Oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, oh God, do not forsake me. Until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Peter and Sandy, the Lord has no retirement. As you go on from this to the, into your next situation, to proclaim God's might and to proclaim God's amazing grace to another generation. Your righteousness, oh God, reaches the high heavens. You who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. <laughs> it's just all this talk about retirement, right? They still bear fruit in old age. Isn't that fantastic, guys? Like we just, the Lord, you are the Lord's planting. And you have borne fruit, and you will continue to bear fruit by God's grace. They are ever full of sap and green. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God for his blessings. And that is that, that you might declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Praise God. The Lord bless you as you go on to the next phase. Peter and Sandy, you have been such a blessing to every one of us here. And I just thank God for his blessing on June, whatever it is that you will be involved in there, whatever steps he leads you there, we know that June will be blessed because we have been absolutely blessed just to have known you for the last 13 years. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you for your patience. Thank you for all, for just letting the seed of God grow and flourish in you to the benefit of everybody else. Thank you. When I think of the time you came, Peter and Sandy, I was very relieved um, because for me it was a, a great weight uh, off my shoulders as I was trying to lead the team here at the time. But um, you know, God sought you out and brought you to us, um, and that's so significant uh, from the furthest ends of the earth. So, um, and I suppose what I've seen, even as I've mentioned maybe earlier on when you said, "Come all you faithful." What I've seen is, is a, a faithfulness and, and a strength and an endurance and a perseverance and all of those wonderful qualities uh, that God has put within you. And uh, it's, it's, it's okay to be able to do that when times are good. It's when the difficulties come, how, you, how you, you remain steadfast and true. And that was modeling something really, really important for us as a people. So, Lord, we just, we just thank you for Peter and Sandy, just for the, the life that they've lived among us, for the example they've given, the way they've conducted themselves. And we just, we just do pray that, Lord, even the future will be even brighter. But, Lord, that is, you have still much to do in them and through them. So we commit them to you this day. We bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Is this for me? For me, Peter, is it? For you, for the church, by yourself. Do I have to give it to them? <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you. Just something small. Thank you very much. Um, for you all, and uh, the Lord bless you as you go forward. This position that I'm taking is very much a part-time position. Um, it's going to entail uh, around eight hours a week. Um, I don't know if it will stay there, but that's, that's what it's meant to be, and uh, we certainly will be popping in from time to time to see if you're all behaving yourselves, <laughs> <laughs> or you can check up on us, so you can, but we love you, and take care, and trust, it's a small, simple gift. Thank you, Peter. Very blessed. Thank, Thank you, you let's so give much, a, all. Let's all stand up and give them a round. Jonathan to my David. the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. 
Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, prison willings in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Well, friends, thank you for joining us in our carol service this morning. Um, Thank you for the blessed time it was in God's presence as we sing those songs. Amen. Next um, week, we aren't, next Sunday, there won't be any service here in the morning. But the previous day, obviously Christmas Day, Saturday, we'll be having a service for one hour prompt, exact, no more, <laughs> at 10.30 to 11.30. So please, if you're able, join with us then. And um, also the week after, um, we are going to have a watch night service from quarter past 11 on uh, the 31st. Let me get the date right. 31st of December. I think that's the last day of the year, isn't it? Yeah. And we're going to cross into the new year with some praise and some worship. Yeah. What a way to begin the year. So if you're available and you're not the worst for wear, please come and join us on the 31st of December. 11.30. Sorry, 11.15 p.m. Yeah, don't be coming in the morning. 11.15 p.m. And then, of course, the following Sunday will be into 2022. Let's hope it's not 2020 as well. 2022. And, uh, well, we're fed up with this pandemic, aren't we? We want to see to an end, an end to it in this coming year, don't we? So let's pray to that end. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the perseverance to continue on. Let me just close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this lovely morning. A morning in which, Lord, to praise you. A morning in which, Lord, to give you thanks for the gift that you sent us, every single one of us, in fact, all of humanity, that you sent your Son into the world to be our Savior. Lord, in the busyness of this season, help us not to neglect or let that fact get lost with the rest of the events and things. Lord, we pray especially that you would bless us as your people. We thank you that we are the family of God. And Lord, I thank you for our families at home and for those who will be joining us for Christmas at home, or maybe we'll be traveling to others. I pray, Lord, that you would bless us as we gather with maybe members of our family who we very rarely see. And so, Lord, I pray that you might just make it a special time for each Christian. And Lord, I also pray for those who may be very far from home and are missing family over this Christmas. Lord, I pray that you would come alongside them and be a brother and a father and a mother and a sister, whatever they need this Christmas. Thank you, Lord, as we come to the end of this year for your provision for 2021. Lord, everything that you have given us, Lord, that you have brought us this far. Here we are this morning. We thank you for our health and our strength. 
Lord, we thank you for those whom you have touched physically this year. Lord, I thank you for Marty here this morning and for how, Lord, you have raised him up to strength that he's able to be here today. Pray that, Lord, that you would bless him and Una into their future. And also, Lord, for each person in our church family who has struggled this year, those who've had COVID and have praised your name, got over it. Those, Lord, who have struggled financially, those who have struggled in their relationships, Lord, those who have had work issues because they've had to work at home, or maybe they've had no work. We thank you, Lord, that you've brought us this far. And Lord, you haven't brought us to the end of this year to let us down next year. And so, Lord, I pray, would you take us by the hand, as it were, and lead us into fresh things. Open up new doors for your people, Lord. Lord, help us as well in our thoughts, in our minds, in our spirits, Lord, to open up, to open up to new things in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. May God richly bless you today and over the coming season. God bless you.